Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I'm joined by my wonderful co-hosts Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. And we are interviewing for the second time, which I think is a first on this show, uh, the passionate, smart Bitcoiner, John Carvalho, who announced recently at the Adopting Bitcoin Lightning Summit that he is the CEO and is leading up uh, Synonym at Synonym.2, T-O, uh, a Bitcoin company. Uh, so I guess first off, John, how you doing? Oh, I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Thank you. In uh, chilly England. I must say. What about you guys, Ricardo and Jerry? I'm doing great. Well, I'm doing pretty hot and it's actually real hot, but um, 35, 40 degrees ish. So, yeah, forgive me if I'm going to be a bit sweaty. Uh, anyway, uh, John, I guess to, to get us started off, first question for you synonym. I was obviously at uh, the, the, the summit, but could you give us a very nice summary, uh, ideally for people who uh, are not, you know, super technical or anything. What is it? What is the goal? What are you doing? Sure, I, I can give it a try. Um, so basically, Synonym is like my vision of, uh, or I shouldn't say only mine, our whole team's vision of, um, you know, trying to model what it would look like if we actually had the concept of hyper Bitcoinization or basically like Bitcoin being like the majority store of value for the whole world or most of the world. And so it involves basically like asking the questions like, what if we really don't have government involved in the economy anymore? What if we don't have those like the regulations related to that? What if we don't have big banks? What if we don't have big tech like Facebook and Twitter and all these things? What would the digital economy actually look like? And so we took that kind of premise and tried to make a whole kind of ecosystem of software and technology that we think is that currently doesn't exist to kind of fill in all the gaps to make sure that like there's at least one tool set available for everybody that wants to kind of opt out of the current paradigm and live in a kind of Bitcoin only framework. So it's kind of like taking the concept, which I'm sure your listeners will be familiar with, of circular economy and adding a couple more sort of uh, facets to that concept. And so we have our own concept called the atomic economy, which is basically combining the concept of circular economy, like efficiency, the minimization of conversion, this kind of these kinds of physical concepts with the concept of a web of trust and a self-sovereign web. And so this basically allows you to kind of reconstruct the web based off of you know your own abstract topics that you apply to others so this is how you decide how you define reputation you know who you can trust and who is even in your networks at all and we're trying to do this in a very interoperable way um, so we have a whole series of products and we have uh, an additional like protocol that we're creating to enable all of this and yeah i guess that's that's scratching the surface of what we're doing basically john can you explain what a web of trust is? Sure. A web of trust is basically a concept of, you know, it's a, it's a pre-existing um, design pattern, I guess you could call it, in cryptography, where people use key pairs, much like Bitcoin key pairs, except they, originally they weren't using Bitcoin key pairs, but our protocol does. Uh, we have our, our protocol that we're working on is called Slash Tags, and we use Bitcoin key pairs because we want to, to be, we want to take advantage of the pre-existing, you know, applications that already back up and store Bitcoin key pairs for Bitcoin. Um, slash tags doesn't use a Bitcoin blockchain at all. It just uses the same elliptic curve that's used to create keys for Bitcoin. And so a web, a web of trust is basically taking the concept of everybody identifying themselves as a key which or a key pair, which gives them the capability to like sign proofs and prove that they, that they are that key and own that key and hold, have possession of that key. Um, so it's sort of like an authentication method. And then it uses that concept and then allows you to now apply some sort of you know, metadata to any other key inside of the network or inside of like, it could be a centralized database. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to like kind of look into a good example, like before there were Bitcoin exchanges, there was a concept called the Bitcoin OTC web of trust. And you can search that right now. The database is still online. Um, it's basically something they integrated with IRC chats so people could do like peer to peer trading with each other and establish a reputation of like completing trades. So if you look in that, if you search that on Google and you find that website, I forget the actual domain name, um, 
you'll actually see some names you recognize in the database. Like there's like Luke Dasher and maybe G Max. I don't remember. There's like some people that are in there. Like everybody that's in there has like a handle in there and they have like either their Bitcoin key and or their PGP key as a way to identify themselves. And then every time that people did business together, like did a trade or, you know, anything that they felt like rating each other on, they would submit a signed message to the database that said like a comment about the trade and a score of minus 10 to plus 10 in range. So Web of Trust is just this concept of, you know, using keys to, you know, tag metadata to other keys. And the metadata basically represents some sort of topic and some sort of range. And now once you have this topic and range, if you rate somebody say plus 10, that puts them on a scale and so, the, so on the web of trust concept, you can kind of like combine it with the concept of, uh, you probably heard of the idea of like seven degrees of separation, like how many people you have to kind of know to know to reach everybody on earth. Um, web of trust has a similar concept where it weights your web of trust based off of distance from you trust wise. And so the people that you rate highly, the people that they rate highly are now like a second layer of your web of trust because you you can have some like associative trust because you trust them and they trust somebody else. And the same goes for like negative trust. Like if you if you trust someone, but they do not trust somebody else, you will now let, trust that person less as well. And you can kind of keep going out in rings in distance of trust from you to kind of use this network as a way to either establish private networks or, you know, who you want to like allow to have feed data data from you, or even just establishing like who to actually search for information and trust in the future. And so you can basically filter your web of trust and use this filtering mechanism as a way to establish permissions or searches or, you know, uh, networks in general. Yeah. So that, that, that explanation to me gives, gives, makes things a little bit clearer as well. So I guess, Tell me if I'm wrong here. Uh, my assumption or my understanding from what I've read on, on it and from what you've said yourself um, is that we're kind of looking at an kind of an, an alternative internet that's built on lightning kind of or like a, a separate uh, internet kind of with this web of trust that's kind of built on lightning or, or, or use light using has uh, nothing to do with lightning. I'll correct you there. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. You first <laughs> off. Um, but I guess we, we're trying to talk about creating something where people, as you said, can kind of opt out of what we're currently doing, AWS and all these kind of centralized services into another kind of another sort of form or, or section of, of internet, I suppose, where you've got, and, and you guys are providing services like slash tags is like a, a wallet, but it also does more than, than that. Like it allows you to store passwords and things. And then there's obviously going to be more things that you do is that kind of right that you're kind of trying to create this alternative kind of internet i suppose to a degree is that there are some semantics there that i probably need to correct because like the, the internet is just a concept for all of the networks that are compatible with each other and so it's not a separate internet because like when people think about internet they think about like internet access like an internet service provider and so we're not going to be like providing a new network for people to connect to in the concept on the layer of an internet so it would be more accurate to say it would be an alternative web. And that's and it matches nicely with the word web of trust anyway. So you can have the World Wide Web and you can have the web of trust separately as separate concepts. Now, they're not incompatible. You can still have World Wide Web websites be accessible through World Wide Web you know, networking concepts and such. But it's just basically a networking concept. And another probably semantic thing I should correct is like with slash tags, um, slash tags is not a service, it's a protocol. And so it's an open protocol. Anybody can use it and apply it however they want to. Um, and even that, even calling it a protocol is a bit of a, uh, you know, it's just for convenience because it's almost more a method. It's a way of using keys, you know, to do a lot of different use cases basically. And so once we have built out the use cases for slash tags that include like the ability to establish like private networks based on your web of trust data. Um, then I would be more comfortable just saying it's a web of trust, but like there are a lot of other use cases, particularly the ones that we've released so far that don't even involve, you know, a web per se. And so it, it's more like a method of using keys for authentication. Um, and what's special about slash tags is there are other uh, tools that people use for using keys for authentication. Um, LNURL auth is an example. Um, you, you can find that, that that is, you know, 
quote unquote based on lightning, but it also doesn't require lightning as a, as a technology either. Um, and so what we're trying to do is like make it so not only do you have keys, but you also have this kind of formalized way of attaching metadata to keys. And so basically anytime you communicate using slash tags, you're also communicating a schema. And that schema is basically like data about how you form data about keys. <laughs> and so it's just basically, it's like a structure for assigning metadata. And so basically you can think of it as like one schema could be like movie categorization and it could include like a, a map of all the different like fields essentially of like all the different things of metadata you would assign to a movie like title, you know, director, act, all the actors, you know, the year it was released, all of these different stats. And so if you use this schema and you attached a key to say frozen two, you could like attach all of the metadata about frozen two to that key and assign that of that file to that key. And you could also start assigning like ratings to that key. So you could say, okay, let me use the, the, the movie categorization schema with the movie rating schema, and I'm going to apply ratings to these movies. And you could do this in a way that is like in mutual networks. So basically the, the data becomes portable and it's not part of a walled garden. Like it doesn't get locked into rottentomatoes.com. It gets locked into the Rotten Tomatoes schema and anybody can use that schema at any website, however they want to. And so it basically is a way of making decentralized, you know, networks and decentralized applications um, that are modular and interoperable. So you don't have to like be locked in. So if you get kicked off Twitter, your Twitter feed could be something that you own and that you can, you know, basically connect to any website. And so you, you getting kicked off Twitter just means that your stuff won't appear at their, do their domain name, but it doesn't mean that your followers won't be able to find you somewhere else. Right. Okay. So to me, it feels like, um, what web three should be i guess you know you hear people talk about web three and there's all like the ethereum and, and solana and all that stuff this feels like what it kind of should be which is like modular in design open source and just and actually decentralized i guess is that kind of am i am i right there in saying this is kind of like a, a good version yeah, of a web three right, that's okay. that's one of the goals we're trying to do with the company is like as part obviously like uh, a required goal, if, if we're going to prove hyper Bitcoinization, we have to also prove why we don't need shitcoins. And so, and, and so the idea here is to show that like with strictly only using the Bitcoin blockchain, you know, no side chains, no altcoins, you know, strictly, you know, using this as a design limitation, can we actually do all the things that Bitcoiners claim we can do? And do we actually not need other blockchains? And we're basically trying to prove that. We're trying to show how Web3 has nothing to do with blockchains. It has nothing to do with like native assets. It has to do with like interoperability, you know, self-sovereign web concepts, things like this. And you just don't need a blockchain to do that. John, are you familiar with the Fediverse and like Mastodon and PeerTube? Like how would slash tags fit in with like federated social media i'm not familiar with all of those um if, if I, i'm familiar with concepts within them but i would say the one of the differences between what we're doing and what's been done before is we're taking a very very abstracted approach like basically if you wanted to create things like you know federated networks or even if you wanted to like add a blockchain to your like identity scheme slash tag sits on top of that so you could you could still have that within a slash tags paradigm if you really wanted it but it's 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 like another abstraction level over that and so it's just it's just the model of applying keys and metadata to keys and that's it and the rest of it is just all use cases that we build out using that concept and using that protocol and so you know federated networks or fediverses or such they're basically like um a concept that would exist in any decentralized network, but it, it is something that kind of locks you in or locks you out. And so slash tags has similar capabilities where say your web of trust, you could use that metadata as a permissioning set. You could say, okay, if you are not this type of metadata, you do not have access to this other type of data that I serve. And so you could see how you could map this now to say a Twitter or, or a social media you know, service. And so if my server, is serving say Mastodon and I'm using slash tags as the account method for the server. Like if you don't meet my capabilities or my requirements to be inside of my web of trust or permissioned into my network, you won't be able to use my, my instance of Mastodon, you know, and you will be, you just, if people come to my instance, they won't see you there because I don't serve your data there. 
but you could make the same decision against me as well. You could say, I'm not going to serve my data to John's Mastodon. I'm going to serve it to, you know, Harry's Mastodon and Joe's Mastodon and whoever else. Like you can, you can, you create the data locally first, and then you decide how you distribute it. So it's more of a, an additive and an outward network than something that's public and global. So my, my, my assumption here is that this is going to take some kind of technical know-how in the beginning right you've obviously got this protocol that people can can use and build upon and and can kind of i'm sure create different tools as well um so i i guess like the the question here is um in in the in the vision that you've got and, and that your team has got um how sort of is, is this is this something that is kind of made to appeal i guess at first probably to bitcoiners and then kind of expand out and become something that appeals to everyone i guess what i'm trying to get at is like what is the the incentive for my mum for example who kind of understands bitcoin more than most people her age what is her, her incentive to 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 actually get involved in this in this web of trust in this kind of alternative web like what what would it be i guess but, but besides the obvious that it's that's decentralized and in my opinion therefore going to be already better than what we have in the in the current web yeah so the beginning of your question you were talking about developers and building things and then the end you shifted towards end users like you know normies i guess you could say um so what i'll say is we're trying to address both sides and and the way we're trying to address it and some other use cases as well um but the way we're trying to address it is we're not only making a protocol you know we're making literally the entire ecosystem so we're actually going to demonstrate as we complete each use case with slash tags or any of the other technology that we're supporting like you know omnibolt and other things we can talk about um we're going to demonstrate it by actually putting it into an app to show how you could use this in a way that is user friendly and gives utility to end users. So for example, like um, the first use cases that we, we, we made for slash tags are slash tags accounts and slash tags contacts. Um, both of these use cases are just, you know, simple ability to add into any wallet or platform or app, the ability to use slash tags as a way to like open and manage web accounts and log into web accounts. And so when we launch our mobile wallet in a few months, we'll show, we'll literally show you like, here is why this is better. Like you now in your wallet, not only can you store your Bitcoin keys, but you can also store your lightning and you can store your lightning tokens and you can store your slash tags accounts. And you'll basically get to see exactly how we propose this is a better user experience because you won't have to memorize passwords anymore. You're just going to have to protect your keys. You, when you want to authenticate, you won't have to like give anybody your email address unless that website specifically requires it as an additional piece of information. The only thing you need to like be a unique entity on the internet is a key. Like, and this is like the most abstracted form of a user account. And so we're kind of zooming out a little bit and saying, let's start there, give a better user experience um, for, for logging in and for managing your passwords, essentially, um, and then keep building on top of that. So that's slash tags accounts, and, we'll, and the wallet will also support slash tags contacts. And contacts are just very similar to the use case you're thinking of already with like contacts in your phone, except it applies that metadata to a key. And so not only is somebody just a listing in a database on your phone, they also have a key associated with them because they're using slash tags. And so now that key, you know, opens up a lot of possibilities because it comes like a digital anchor. Like you could find them on the slash tags network. That means that they could have a server that represents them. And so now you can do things like, for example, if I add you as a contact, you could now have like, like what we'll eventually do is you can now have the capability to like, tell me which payment methods you support. And I could have my own list of payment methods I support. And so when I want to pay you, I won't just like send it to your on-chain address that I have stored. I will actually contact you on the slash tags network to get your current list of payment methods supported. And this will all happen in the background. The user won't have to deal with this. And, and you'll say, okay, I, I have a lightning channel and you have a lightning channel and we both prefer lightning. So I'm going to, I'm going to automatically present you a lightning invoice for the payment that you want to make to me. And, or if you want to pay me on chain, then I'll say, yes, here's my on chain address that you can pay me at. I'll generate an address for you to pay. 
And because the, the ways to pay in Bitcoin are always changing and they're always, we always have more, you know, we have like legacy, we have multi-sig, we have SegWit, we have Taproot, we have Lightning, we have tokens on Lightning coming. And so you, we need some kind of way to interface with people to see what, how we match when we're paying each other. So slash tags contacts will enable two more slash tags use cases that we can build on top of that, which will be um, like some sort of like pay name or like pay card or some kind of way to do what I just described with resolving how to pay you. And also um, it'll become like your first step to creating your, your first web of trust. And so while we don't have the web of trust um, features shipped yet, and we're not building private networks out of this yet, you'll already have kind of bootstrapped, you know, your first web of trust by creating your contact list. And so we, we have a very strategic approach to like how we're going to apply the technology, how we're going to demonstrate the technology and how we're going to include it in actual end user applications to demonstrate the utility of it.